You leave your laptop in the hotel room while grabbing dinner downstairs. It's locked, you've got a strong password, you even close the lid, but when you come back, nothing seems different, and that's exactly the problem. Evil made attacks don't need malware, phishing, or an internet connection, just physical access. A few quiet minutes alone with your machine, and the damage is already done. First tactic, bootloader tampering. The attacker inserts a USB stick, reboots the laptop, and installs a compromised bootloader. When you enter your password the next time, it captures it, then passes it through so everything looks normal. You don't get locked out, you don't see an error, but your credentials are now saved and ready to be exfiltrated. Defense, use full disk encryption with tamper detection and set your BIOS to boot only from the internal drive with a firmware password. Next, B, IOS reflash. The attacker enters the firmware setup screen and installs a malicious BIOS or UEFI update. It lives beneath your operating system, invisible to antivirus software, and can survive a full wipe. Once installed, it owns your machine forever. Protection? Lock your BIOS with a password, disable external boot, and enable secure boot on supported devices. Then, there's the peripheral sniffer, a tiny hardware implant placed inside your keyboard, power brick, or even your USB-C dongle. It logs keystrokes, or better, intercepts decrypted data after you log in. No software required. It hides in plain sight, silently collecting secrets. The counter? Travel with your own hardware, inspect devices before use, and use tamper evidence seals if you're serious. Now, consider the RAM freeze attack. Your machine uses full disk encryption, so you're safe, unless it's in sleep mode. A maid swaps in a cold spray can from the minibar, chills the RAM chips, and quickly reboots the laptop into a memory dumper. The encryption keys, still lingering in RAM, get copied and stored in seconds. Solution? Use Hibernate instead of sleep, which flushes keys to disk. Or, power down completely. Another move. Fake Charger Injection The attacker replaces your hotel room's power adapter with a modified clone that includes a data injector or logging hardware. You plug in, and it begins to collect or even inject commands via USB-C power delivery features. Defense? Never use chargers you don't control. Bring your own and use charge-only cables that block data lines. Now let's talk about boot menu exploitation. Many laptops allow temporary boot device selection without needing a password. An attacker powers on your laptop, opens the boot menu, and runs a live OS from a USB drive. From there, they can read files, install backdoors, or clone your entire drive if it isn't encrypted. This takes minutes. Fix it by disabling boot menu access entirely and enabling full disk encryption. Without that, your lock screen is just a suggestion. Next trick, drive cloning in place. The attacker connects your laptop to a forensic duplicator while you're gone. No need to boot it. They copy the entire drive sector by sector and analyze it later at their leisure. If you're not using disk encryption, everything, browser history, documents, saved passwords is wide open. Encrypt your drive? Always. No exceptions. Then comes modified dock attacks. Hotel desks sometimes have universal docking stations or USB-C hubs for guest use. One of them has a microcontroller implanted inside. You connect, thinking it's just charging or outputting video, but behind the scenes, it emulates a keyboard, typing hidden commands in milliseconds, opening PowerShell, creating backdoors, and vanishing before you notice. Rule. Never connect to public or shared docs. If you didn't bring it, don't trust it. Another low-effort, high-impact trick, external keyboard macros. The attacker places a look-alike keyboard in your room. It works like normal, but it also contains scripted key sequences that fire off commands every time you log in. It might create a hidden admin account, turn on remote desktop, or log passwords in the background. Bring your own gear, or at least check for unfamiliar hardware before plugging in. There's also boot-to-network implants. This involves modifying your laptop's boot order and redirecting it to boot from a malicious network source, usually a rogue PXE server nearby. The attacker controls the OS your machine runs before it even reaches your drive. It can mimic your login screen perfectly, capture credentials, and install persistent malware in one move. Lock your firmware. Disable network boot entirely unless it's mission critical. 
Now comes the Evil Twin operating system. An attacker replaces your internal SSD with an identical looking drive. Same size, same brand. But this one has a compromised operating system pre-installed. You power on the device, everything looks familiar, your wallpaper is the same, because they cloned your setup. But every login, every click, every file is now being logged or exfiltrated. Best defense? Tamper evident case stickers and a secure BIOS password that prevents booting from a swap drive. Another move is hardware key injection. A microcontroller hidden inside a USB stick or even a charging cable is configured to act like a keyboard. Once plugged in, it types malicious commands faster than you could blink. Opening terminal windows, disabling security settings, and installing malware, these devices cost less than dinner and leave no trace unless you know what to look for. Avoid unknown USB accessories entirely and scan your system for strange device logs if something feels off. There's also the firmware implant via Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt ports give direct memory access. Great for speed, terrible for security. Attackers can flash malicious firmware through this port in seconds. You'll never know it happened. Some implants survive OS wipes, disk encryption, and reinstallation. Protect yourself with kernel DMA protection or disable Thunderbolt access when not in use. Evil made attacks can also target trusted platform modules. TPMs, the chips designed to protect your encryption keys. A skilled attacker can physically desolder your TPM, read data from it with custom equipment, and reattach it before you ever return. It's rare, but if you're high value, so are you. Use TPMs in conjunction with strong BIOS passwords, tamper detection, and full shutdown protocols. Then there's the compromised webcam cover. It's a tiny piece of plastic but a swapped cover can hide a tiny lens that records your password entries or facial unlock attempts. It doesn't even need to broadcast live. It just stores footage locally and waits. If your privacy cover looks different, feels loose, or wasn't yours to begin with, don't touch that device until you've inspected it fully. Some attackers skip electronics and go for environmental manipulation. They place an RFID tag under your laptop or slip a BLE tracker inside your bag. It doesn't hack anything. It just tells them when you're in the room, when you leave, and how long they have to operate. Physical presence isn't just useful. It's everything in this kind of attack. The more predictable you are, the easier their window gets. One trick blurs the line between physical and psychological. Fake maintenance excuses. A hotel staff member knocks while you're out routine AC check, fire alarm test, room inspection. They enter with access, tools, and a story. Meanwhile, your laptop's bag gets opened, inspected, tampered with. You return none the wiser. Rule of thumb, never leave sensitive devices exposed. Use hotel safes when possible, or better, carry gear with you. Then there's compromised power banks. Looks like a normal portable charger, but inside, a modified chip can push data over USB as soon as you plug in. It could act as a keyboard, launch scripts, or even drop malware that waits silently until you get home. If you borrow a power bank from a hotel front desk, a conference booth, or even a free gift table, you've just plugged in a potential attack. Some attackers go low-tech with hidden cameras for shoulder surfing. They don't need access to your device, just a line of sight. A tiny pinhole camera mounted in a smoke detector or behind a mirror captures you typing in your password. Combine that with a later physical breach and they already know what to look for. Never assume you're alone in a hotel room. Cover your screen when logging in. Type like someone's watching because someone might be. There's also magnetic tampering, not the Hollywood kind with magnets erasing hard drives, but small, targeted magnetic probes that interfere with sensors in modern laptops, causing glitches in lid detection, biometric sensors, or triggering specific boot modes. It's rare, but it exists, and it only works when someone has time alone with your hardware. A variant worth knowing. Fake updates on Wake. You open your laptop and see a full screen update prompt. It looks exactly like your OS. Same fonts, same language, but it's not. It's running from a modified bootloader installed earlier. You enter your password to proceed, and that password gets saved while the attacker reboots into the real system behind the scenes. 
Use pre-boot authentication with BIOS password prompts that appear before any OS screen can load. Evil made attacks aren't just about hotels. They work anywhere your machine is alone. Airport lounges, co-working spaces, conference green rooms, anywhere you step away and trust the lock screen to do the job. And here's the kicker. Most of these attacks leave no visible trace, no pop-ups, no malware alerts, no error messages. Everything still works. That's why they work. The one on screen? Worth a look if you like knowing what most people don't.